So Brad, we're here at Tuna Harbor, just outside of Seaport Village. What's the vision for Seaport? It's a pretty grand vision. They're looking to redo about 70 acres of land and water all the way from the Midway right behind me down to the Manchester Hyatt Hotel. And there's going to be a lot of stuff. The main thing is that we're concentrated on is Tuna Harbor, but there's also going to be hotels, an aquarium, an education center, a giant spire to go up in the sky, um, par underground parking, a boutique hostel or hotel. A lot of things are going in here. So with San Diego being a waterfront city, you would think commercial fishing is booming here, but you say it's not. Why is that? Well, it's not just San Diego. It's actually everywhere around the country. The, the commercial fishing industry has kind of taken a hit over the last few decades. There's a lot of reasons why. There's mainly regulatory issues, federal, state, and local, about how these guys can fish, what they can fish, what kind of gear they need to use. And there's a lot of foreign competition. So right now, America actually imports 90% of its seafood. So most of what you eat is not from here. So right now, they're, they're surviving. They're doing OK, uh, but could be, according to the fishermen, a lot better and a much bigger presence in San Diego. So speaking of the fishermen, you've been in some of these closed door meetings with the fishermen and developer. Um, what's being discussed and whose input has been considered? Well, yeah, I've been at these meetings for the last six months. They've, they've been going on for, I think, about a year or, or actually more. And what the developer is doing is trying to get input from them about what they would like to see this harbor look like. The developer is ready to pour more than a billion dollars into this development and what he really wants to see is a truly working waterfront. It's a draw for him and for the tourists that come here, but what the fishermen are trying to do is kind of leverage that opportunity and say, okay, you know, you, you're going to have this big development, we're a part of it, we want to say. And so they've been going back and forth and to be part of these meetings has been pretty interesting because as they started out, uh, the fishermen are very skeptical, they did not trust this developer, but over the months they've really, I think, started to come together, work together and trust each other just a little bit more. So Brad, we're here on the docks and part of this development plan is to turn the harbor into a functioning harbor for the commercial fishing industry. What would that look like? What that looks like is pretty much an all-in-one spot. So a fisherman yesterday described it really well to me as think of a Home Depot or a Costco where you can get everything you need in one, in one place. So it, they don't just need docks or, or, or space, they also need supporting industries, whether that's fuel service or someone to drop off ice or processors coming in and out, offloaders, things like that to actually make this a spot where it's all in one shop. So Brad, what about people who like San Diego's waterfront just the way it is and who may be uneasy about any major changes? Will their considerations be taken into account? Yeah, and, and they kind of already have been. For the last year or year and a half, the port has been um, talking to people. There have been a lot of stakeholders that have come out to the port meetings and a lot of public input that has helped shape this process. There are a lot of people that don't want to see this change at all, but then again, there are a lot of people that do. So what I would urge anyone, whatever way they feel about this project, is just to actually show up and have your voice heard. There's a meeting every single month at the port, uh, the Board of Supervisors meeting. It's all online. The agenda is there. So I'd urge people to take part in it. And why should people care about what happens at the port? Well, the port is actually in charge of all of this land. I mean, there's miles and miles of waterfront here and public land, but it actually is all the public's land. We technically own this land, the port just manages it. So anything that happens along the waterfront, you should treat as if it were your backyard. So whether it's Tuna Harbor or hotels going up here, people should know that they have a say in this and this is their land and their city. So, so what's next? When might we see some changes? Well, the next step is next month where uh, the developer, the fisherman, and a bunch of other people are going to present the plans that they've been working on to the Port Board of Supervisors with the hope of having it baked into what's called the Port Master Plan Update, which is this lengthy process that the Port's been going through to update their master plan, which kind of lays out development all across the board down to the nitty gritty of every single parcel. So once that happens, then they have an environmental impact report to go through, then uh, probably a whole bunch of lawsuits. Um, so it's going to, this is going to be many years down the line. Brad Racino, iNews Source reporter, thank you so much. Thank you.